and my ability to come. Ideally, I want to go back into it. Ideally, I want to go back into it this way, but with the pressure that this guy is pushing onto me, and my ability to come up. Go ahead, just go ahead. Which way did I go? I went forward. I went forward, and that's something that when you watch film, it looks like you're going forward. It looks like we got to teach your guys to come up and uh-uh. If I come up and out this way, I'm going to get knocked in my hand. You have got to get your athletes, in my opinion, to explode back into the guy. If he pushes into me, that's fine. But at least I'm going to have an opportunity to get to my feet there. And that's what I want. I want to get the weight off of me onto him. Talk about shoulder knee, knee alignment a lot of times from the feet, you know, stance, position, all those things. Shoulder knee alignment is very essential. Hey, it's the same thing on bottom, it's the same thing on top. Right now, I've got to have my shoulder and knee in as good a vertical alignment from the ceiling to the mat as I can. I want to keep my hips under me. When he jams in here, and I start getting jammed forward, I've got to keep my hips under me. See that? Start attacking, getting, getting the weight, get my hips back under me. And right now, he's trying to take me that way. I got to get to a change over here. I got to get on my opposite butt. It's just concept in the fact of feeling. In the fact of feeling it. It's, it's being able to feel where the resistance is. If I'm here and, and he jams me, and I get my weight up, this isn't good enough for me right now. See that? I've got to get the weight transferred back to my other hip. Or either that or right now, if I feel he's eating, maybe, maybe we, we started the first time, he beat me a little bit, now he jammed me. So I'm going to get in here. You know, I'm going to get this foot out and start posting back into it. Right now, he is not set up to bump me this way. I don't need any post here. Take me that way. Can't. He, yeah, he had to switch. See that? He switched off. That's why they call this a changeover. And... I don't know who I'm going to get credit for, for teaching me that, but the gravity system really is the one that, that makes you aware. When I think of changeover, I think of a little rat mark over there. When you sit back, when you sit out and sit back, I sit to a changeover right here. If he's going to a crab ride, and that's fine. We're going to get to that. Don't go to a crab ride right now. When I sit back, you know, I want to get to my opposite hip. I don't want to be on my butt. I want to be on my hip attacking hands. If I sit back into it and stand, if he's riding me on the left side and I stay on my left hip, he can chop me right there. Easy for him. I got my weight's leaning that way and he's set up to go that way. So when I sit back into him, I'm going to sit back to here. In order for him to break me down, he's going to have to switch off. And I'm not. Let's go ahead and switch off. Let me go my elbows out. He can't. He can't. I, am, I have taken total control of the situation even though he started in the advantage position. And that's what we're after here. What I like to do is I like to capture the hand on the, the uh, belly, the hand that starts in the belly. I attack that one first, whether I'm standing up or sitting back. I like to get two on one, and I don't like to think of it as grabbing hands as much as it is elbow fighting. When, you, when, when coaches talk about hand control, I just come up here. When we talk about <coughs> hand control in here, it's not really hand control. Because if you notice, if I'm reaching for his hands, there's space between my elbows. Cross wrist. Right, right there, see that? So I got I got an elbow fight first. Hand control is about controlling his hand, not necessarily getting my hand to him. Right here. Same thing on the bottom when we start here. Whether I'm gonna sit back into it this way, I'm looking at hand control right now. Because you notice what I've done with my elbows, is they're tight, they stay tight to my body here. This hand, this elbow's pitching off on the inside. He can dig in, that's fine, he can get across this. He can't. He can't. He's beating me inside, but I'm pitching him off. That's where all that time in the weight room comes in. Hands, push. Push. What I like to do is take my opposite hand, if his right hand's on my belly button, my left hand is going to push that hand off. I don't grab it. If you grab it, that creates space where you can come inside again. I push it off to here, post, and then your basic fundamental hip vice that seems to be gone with wrestling too. <coughs> Gotta learn those basics. Gotta learn those basics. Hip vice, cross face, people look. My team looked at me like I was crazy last spring when I came in and talked about hip vice. You gotta know those things. Same thing again coming up. Whistle blows, I'm gonna be exploding up into my stance. I'm coming here. Right here, I'm not grabbing. I'm 
not grabbing, I'm pushing. I'm pushing. I grab that little space with my elbow. And that's important. And, uh, a lot of guys that are top on bottom, they got to do a good job of getting to their feet. They lose it all because they're doing this. It always reaches back and down. They maybe they close their head or they're here. And they get they get a good they get a good shot on him this way. And then they're starting to come in here and get hand control. Look at where my elbows are. This left hand coming in. He cross wrist me here all the way to the other side. <coughs> right there. I'm in trouble now. Now I gotta go back and clear this. So when you get to those situations, when I get when I get here, I'm here, I'm pinching the elbows off, I'm pushing. Right now I can Pose and hip height more if he's really pushing into me right now or trying to hang on. I'm just going to push myself up into the stance. Right up into my stance. Let's see here. Again, real quick, if he jams me forward, this is a skill that most of you I'm sure know, but when you get extended here, you have got to scoot to shoulder knee alignment. Right now, I've got to get my hips to here. And ideally, when he jams, when your opponent jams your athletes, you got they got to stay down. Go ahead, and jam. They got to stay down. To learn to wrestle like this. When a guy jams you forward, it's human uh, nature to do this. Have re redevelop their thinking. When, when a guy jams you, drop your hips more. It's like go ahead, drop your hips more this way. See that? Now I'm starting to get a chance to defend it. Even though he's got a hard nose kid, he's hanging on, he's jamming, he's going, you've got to drop the kicks on me. Start getting back this way. It's tough. It's tough. And that's where a lot of the problems stem from, where you got guys, they have an initial good move, and then they get knocked down, they're laying on the mat, and their wrists are all tied up in there. And, and those are just some important things. <coughs> Leg riders. Go ahead, just jam me. Guy jams a lot of time. They're looking to get space in here. You have problems with a guy that's getting lagged to death. Heck, have him start with his knees together. <clears throat> right here. Guy can't throw a leg in now. There's no rule that says you have to start with your feet or your knees shoulder width apart, is there? I don't think so. I think it's just this line. So we can start. I can have my knees together if I'm getting lagged to death. And have him get back into a guy. If a guy's riding, riding in here, just wipe your knee in there like you're looking to throw it. Guy's riding the knee in here, everybody knows this one, I hope. Just come in here, throw it all like you need to turn back into him, or get in there again. Or I come here, just throw it all the way off there. That's, that's old school there. Great stuff, keeping the knee out. Guy throws a leg in, right, right as soon as he starts getting it in. Everybody knows the mule kick, the problem with that is, is a tough guy in here. When you start doing this, they're going to be jamming me forward this way. A good leg man wants to take me over the shoulder. See that pressure right there. See that? He wants to elevate the hip that he's attacking and pin the opposite hip to the mat and get, get this shoulder posted. What I need to do, start again. No, no. Off. <coughs> what, what, what I need to do, or what your guys need to do, in my opinion, is when a guy jams you here and he starts throwing a leg in, when he start, as soon as he gets that leg in, your free foot, guys behind me, this free foot, left side, I have got to get a hold of that ankle. See that? Catch that ankle, straight the knees together, coming up. Use the foot as a hand. Coming back this way, same thing, you've got a leg in, it just came in, just came in, I'm going to use this free ankle. I'm going to sit to my hip. But the free ankle is going to post that off, and then I'm going to bring my knees up and together. I'm in danger position, though. I'm extending, I'm in his lap. i got to post and get out of his lap. We'll get to that position a little bit. Uh, again, legs in. Come back this way. I'm catching this way. Pull it off. Sitting knees together. Post it out. Everybody see that? Alright. Guy got a leg in. You know, it's funny. I was watching a coach over here talk about when a guy, he's got a leg in, and the guys, they always want to knock him down to their hip here. This is this doesn't do anything, guys. It doesn't do anything. But the weight's at my elbows, I'm extended. He's looking for, he, he's baiting me. He wants to be here. He wants to be here. This is a good crab ride position. 
He's got a leg in. Anybody who knows anything about legs and is comfortable here, you're going to have a hard time getting out. What you've got to do is if you get here and you miss catching that ankle, you've got to get these hands inside or these feet inside and just wrestle with me a little bit. Right now, he's taking me this way. He's trying to extend me. I've got to get to that opposite butt cheek, cheek again right here. And he's going to be trying to take me out. But as you do that, what you want to do is I want to get to here. And it's going to be a fight from heck. You're, you know, your kid's a knucklehead for letting the leg come in anyway. It's not going to be easy to, to clear. <laughs> Wrestle with him. I start, see, see that? See, he's starting to lose that. I, I'm posting, but I'm not heavy on my post. I'm just kind of walking up. Here. I'm not laying here like this. I'm never on my elbow. and never extended back. I want to stay tight here. Get to here. Now I'm okay. Now I'm okay. We're going to go to that, like I said, in a little bit. I want to post and get out of his lap. There's a couple of ways to do it. Some coaches do it different than others. But you do not want to sit down in a guy's lap there. Period. Period. Coming, coming back again. He, let's say he gets me broken down to the point where right now, hey, he's got, you on the, he's got your belly on the mat. He's t pretty much embarrassing, embarrassing the bottom guy right now. You cannot ever be on your belly. You've got to learn to stay off of your belly as a team. And one of the ways that you can do that is learning that little drill that I showed you where you scoot your hips underneath. But if you do get to your belly, you're going to have to suck it up and get tough. And this leg that he's not attacking, a lot of times, come over with this knee. A lot of guys, they'll ride right there where I can't get that knee out. i got I got to be able to push back into it and turn this hip to the back and get this knee out. And what that does is it puts a weight down on his leg and then I can crawl the knee past. And you can crawl the knee past other things again. You can see that again or not? Are we good there? One more time. One more time. He's got me broken down. He's taking me this way. The only reason why he's taking me this way, I haven't learned how to eat the pain. You have got to get tough in here. Bottom line. Bottom line. Like I said, you can't give it up. But if you do, right now what I want to do is I want to push back. I want to push back like this. Elbows are out. This is a bad position. A guy can near it. They push back and my elbows in. I'm getting back this way. Go ahead. He's trying to get me flat here. All I want to do is, if I can, I like to use my heel. But a lot of times, all I need to do is just pull that off. Pull that off. If get the best leg guys in the world, it's, it's, it's not going to be cake. You're going to have to work in there. From there, again. He's got a leg in. I'm flat on the mat. I get that knee out. I cross that off the right here. Now what do we do? Now you got kids that they do this. Cross wrists are begging for it. What I got to do is turn my elbows in and my hands out and push back into him and figure out a way to get my knees back to my chest. What happens a lot of times is we're taught to do this. That means all this space at both sides of me right now. I got to remember that as much as I push back into the guy, if I don't move my knees to my chest, I'm still vulnerable. Right now, I can push back into it this way. Okay, right now, he's getting my wrist in there. I get my wrist free in here. But I push back into it. There's still all that space. See that? Go ahead and wrestle with me again. Right there, what I got to do is I got to get a watch. Now watch, if I do this, I'm going to be vulnerable for a deep waist, right? So you got to pinch it off. When you come up, I'm going to pinch it off in here, cross. Coming up to my sit out. I'm getting to my sit out. Again, I'm on my belly. I just cleared that leg. I'm getting to here. He can't, but the only way he can attack me right now is the cheek tilt me that way. Get my knees to my chest. I'm not coming here, and then here, I get to here. Stay with me. Get to here, and I sit back. <coughs> There's my changeover again. I'm right back where I want to be. He's got to rest. He's got to rest. He's starting to roll it up. Obviously, if I can swim it out, that's great. If the guy's doing a wrist strike, right, he's going to run and he's not going to pull. See that? But I got to get, get that straight. Get that straight, come back inside. Now, you think I'm going to land back inside my elbows again? Huh? How do you stop the guy? Well, maybe I'm not going to land it. I'm going to follow him with my elbows. See that? The elbows are going to be close to the body anyway. Fundamental wrestling. Right now, I got my, my number one goal is to get back to my base. You can't keep waste me this way. This is the only way I'm vulnerable. You see that? What can you do to me here? If you're through, now, now I'm in trouble. 
See that? So that's why I attack this hand. And I don't sit here for crying out loud. I've got to get back in and get to that table. Now we've got nothing. Everybody see that angle? Can I get that right? Okay. Huh? Facing you. Mm -hmm. Guy's got me broken down. I'll start from the leg again. He's got that leg in tight. He's grinding you. Oh, the, the bottom guy's hoping the referee calls it potentially dangerous, like they're doing all the time now. Uh -uh. <laughs> gotta get that in now. Back in this way. See that? See this knee? This is important. If I can get this knee up right here, because what it does is I push and I push. It puts the weight down. He'll tell you there's a lot of weight on that foot. And then I'm just going to crawl the knee by. Go ahead and wrestle with me. He's going to be coming just like he is right there. And that's where a guy traps you. The athletes are, are being lazy in here. Not lazy, maybe they're just not that well coached, right? <laughs> you get in here, you got to keep my elbow down. I'm going to push back. C careful, conscious of him being able to hip tilt me this way. Right there. Getting off the over. Hit back. <laughs> that, that's important there. Again, another scenario. Come, what's that? Just, just uh, we're broken down flat right now. Guys are, are trying to um, near wrist me. Can't do this with the legs. Guys are coming in, they're trying to scoot that leg in right there. Again, if we do this, I'm giving him, I'm giving him what he wants. Right now, I'm giving him a, a deep way to a cheek tilt there. He starts attacking that side, I'm going to get here. See that? And look what I'm doing. He's, up, he's in front of my arm right now with this knee in. He can't ride underneath my arm. Get your arm in safety. See that? Knee's under. Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. You are in dire straits for position anyway. So when you do this type of skills, it's got to be quick. It's got to be quick. And the reason why I don't like to do this, which is the way I was taught all through college, when you come up, you push back in, there's so much space. And guys throw that leg in on the other side. I remember Jeff Prescott. That wrestling that guy. Got on it. Push back in, he's throwing a leg in. It don't matter which side he's on. He's got to get that leg in. That's where they live. That's where they want to be. So when you when you get here, get the heel. You're in danger only if he's inside. Get the heel. Okay. Any questions there at all? Yeah. So, what, what kind of drill do you do? Do you do, do, you do repetition drills on that? Bring a knee to your... We work on it just like I'm doing now. We'll show them how to do it and send them out. Let them work on it at their own pace. And then we'll start them. We'll do situation wrestling at the end of a practice where a guy's got a cross wrist, guy's got a near wrist, guy's got a leg in on the left side by his belly, guy's got a leg in the left side up on the base, whatever. That way. One of the things that is a, is a key drill that I'm going to give credit to Coach Gable for this one. Get off me, please. Right here, you get when the referee blows a whistle, he just calls it 30 second hip height. And what you're doing is that whistle blows and you're starting to come up. I'm not going to necessarily get to my feet. I'm just going to rapid motion. So I might be in here. I might be coming back this way. I might come in. I'm never on my hip, though. Maybe an occasional cramp. Just coming in here. Coming in here. Coming back. Just sitting back into a guy. Back this way. Just so if he was riding me. If he was riding me, go ahead. Just take me. If he was riding me, go ahead and wrestle with me. Just about half a that that type of thing. That's more of an exaggeration than anything else. But <coughs> the thing that irritates me as a coach is when you get an athlete and he's starting to pick it up, and all of a sudden maybe he does this. That was great. Pose, it wasn't there. I go to hip height. He rises, he throws the saddle on and rides me in. And then they go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Get him to keep going. <laughs> and that hip height drill will help. Because it, it's not about getting away as much as it is about constant motion. If you can move, 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 you're going to get away. You're going to get away. And if you don't get away, then people are going to come watch you anyway. <laughs> and that's the 
fans out of the basketball court near the wrestling mat. That's what we want. So that that is huge. <coughs> Again, it's just you know a lot of times what we used to do in high school is get that hip, come back. I, I took it. Never want to be in the hip, so I'm just gonna come here. No, it's like you're Stephen Adams breakdancing. You know, <laughs> I don't know how good at it he is, but take it to a wrestling battle, not an entertainment battle. But that, that's kind of what you want to do. Good stand-up drill. Coming here, they just just starting to warm, warm up right there. Yeah, it's coming there. I want to hit back into it hard, hard, and then yeah, getting the hips away. Coming back, there. yeah, getting those hips away. Remember when you wrestle with a guy. When I wrestle this way, the reason why we're like this, we want our hips away. We call this a Jesse Whitmer syndrome. Little guy would get to his feet and he'd be like this. Hey, I'm supposed to be in my stance, coach. Stance is out, but he's behind me. I'm going to get my hips away. See that? You come up with this way. Hand control, down, push it, not grab it. Not grab it, push it. Get into there. Those are all real, real good drills. And then the wall drill. If you were the wall, you know, just coming in here, right there, you know, you guys want to make sure you see that there. Using the wall like, like, you know, all of a sudden I'm sitting back and then I'm going to get it like But, all that's for not if I don't get hand control. Now I can get out. Now you can get out. <coughs> Those are a couple good drills there. Oh. And then put them on the bottom. The only way they're going to get better is put them on the bottom. And uh, you, you guys all know that. All know that. When it got, starts getting stale in the room, you know, and, and guys are broken down, and you say, okay, we're going to the bottom with the blows, and they do this, you know, then you're going to have to just stay fresh, stay positive, and change the. Change, uh, tactics and how you're going to get them to be able to fight from there. Those are important, important areas. Okay, guy goes to a crab ride. Any questions? Done anything else? Guy goes to a crab ride. Like, like I was, I push back. And he's real comfortable in here. I push back. He's going, yeah, you got me. Push right back into his crab ride. He's got me. He's got me trapped. Right? No. What you, what you want to do, and again, everybody talks about timing. He's timing off on his feet. This, that, and the other thing. Well, what's timing? Timing is recognizing something that's there before it is. When you're on, when you're hitting on all cylinders, you're seeing things as they develop. You're not seeing them after they develop and they go, oh yeah, there's my high crop. That's when you're on your nose. Right now, same thing here. Ideally, the 99% of the guys, when I push back into them, they're not going to go to a crab ride. When you wrestle with, with a guy like this guy, I'm going to push back into him. He goes, no, go, just go to the crab ride, like, like you would. Right here, when I push back there, this, that's where he wants to be. I recognize that right away. And what I've got to do is I've got to get my hips high and out of his lap. And there's two schools of thought here, where I'm from, and I'll show you both ways. I just haven't, haven't uh, developed the other way yet. But what I like to do, preference-wise, is when I come here, I feel that crab ride. Right now, I want to post. Both hands on the leg, right here. My elbows are tight. I'm not like this. I'm extended. If he gets under my arm, just extend me and take me through. If he gets me there, I'm, I'm going to throw here, guys. I'm extended and I'm not in good position. And that's a foregone conclusion in wrestling. If you're here and you're extended, you don't want to be there. So now watch. Again, hand control. Hand control. When I sit back in, I'm here. I recognize right away I'm in trouble. Pose. Now I'm going to pick a side. It doesn't matter. I might come this way. Then all of a sudden pick this way. Wrestle with me. Now what's going to happen is you're going to, when you first start doing this as a group, your kids are going to turn that way. <coughs> and he's going to be like Josie Wales. He's back up in the back. He's going to stop. Turn that way. This is where fundamental wrestling comes into play again. I sit back. Oh, he crab rode me. I get out of his lap. I'm going to get that way going in. I get those hips high. Right here, I have got the hip ties back in this way. <coughs> right there. That is key. That is key. Again, I sit back in the post. 
get out of that thing. If I turn this way, he's going to follow me. He's got a hit bite back here. If I hit bites like this, he's still got me. Haskett, you guys, he's coaching out here now. That guy is, is, is a freak of nature from that position. <laughs> well, he could be sitting on his butt and you can hip heist and you're not getting away. You have got to hip heist back into him. This way. Hips, cover, the chest. Now I'm okay, maybe. See that? One more time from there. And then we're going to go into where he crab rides me. Start on the other side. I got scouted on him. See that? <laughs> You just ride on this side, don't you? Yeah, you gotta learn. <laughs> <laughs> you sit back into the right there. You gotta learn. Hold, pick his eye. Wake up. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Random situation here. Guys, a lot of coaches ask me about this is good. This is fine. If you like to, if you, if you like to grab me from here, if you're good at it, that's great. I don't like to be in my hip. Um, that's my personal, like I said, I'm a very basic wrestler. I like to have my hips turned toward the man. In here, a lot of times, you know, if he can rock and kick and roll, he might, you know, he might end up coming up. Yeah, I, I could get five here. There's no doubt about it. I could get five here. You know, they talk about pushing this down and, and all that stuff's good. I just like to get my points and ensure that I'm out. Especially when you're talking about a guy that's trapped, right? And Kale. You guys saw K.O. work. I don't know if you go over his offensive crap right series at all. He did That he's. You guys have seen him wrestle. You're not getting away from that guy if he doesn't want you to. You got to get out of his lap. One more time. From him put me there. Just go ahead. Yeah, he puts me there. I got beat off the whistle. No big deal. No big deal. Elbows tight. Push it on the push it on the knees. When I say push on the knees, ideally his hand, but right now I'm using my elbow on one side. See that if I come here, I feel like he can he's got a lot better grip, so I'm keeping his arm pinched off. Keep it there. Keep it there. I'm keeping his arm pinched off by squeezing my elbow here. And look what I do. My butt comes off the mat immediately. I do not want to stay in this type of a situation here. Go ahead, scrap right here. I don't want to stay in here and pull. As soon as we go to a crab ride situation in here. Go ahead. <coughs> right now he's trying to kick me. That's fine. Kick me that way. Get out of the crap. And then he gets up that way. See that? It's, it's catch and go. It's, it's touch and go. You've got to be ready to rock and roll there. You're going you're gonna to wind up in trouble. Okay. Um, any, anything from that position? That, that pretty much covers what I wanted to do on bottom, unless you guys want to see anything else. <coughs> Yeah. You talked about two ways of getting out of that crab ride. Okay, yeah, thank you. This comes down, Lee Fullhard, who was a national champion in Iowa back in 97. He's been on the national team since 2000, whatever. You guys know Lee, I hope. Um, what he likes to do, do it slow. Go ahead, crab ride. You can do it the other side, too, if that's your comfort side. I'm just telling you. <laughs> coach him, coach him. Where's he at? You coach him? Oh. Oh, yeah, there. That's going to be a problem. He'll <laughs> <laughs> pick that up. Dog if I get on the left side, he will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right here, I'm in this position. He goes to put me in a crab ride. I do it real slow. He goes to put me in a crab ride. What Full Heart likes to do, and I've seen it from some other guys when I was coaching in Montana last year. We had our 84-pounder from Washington State did this real well. Don't worry about posting here, worry about getting your hip hips high. And what he does is he just, he's already here, all he's gonna do is he's gonna post, and instead of worrying about getting out of the lap after he crab rides, he's getting out of the lap as the guy crab rides me, and I'm posting my foot and stepping out high this way. So I'm actually doing, if I could explain it in words, I'm actually hip heisting as I come out of the crab ride position. I'm not jumping my hips out and then going to a hip heist. I'm hip heisting together. Again, do it real slow. He's coming here, I'm going to post, and I want to get my hips high and back over top of him. And I don't, like I said, I don't do it real well, but the guys that do do it well that I've seen are excellent at it. Full Heart's one of them. Tyson Thievery's was the other one. Just, just remarkable, remarkable. And I, ideally, 
What happens when you watch it in practice, go ahead. When you watch it in practice here, it looks like you're just bulldozing over the chest this way. See that? What I'm doing is I'm knocking the way I'm extending him. A crab ride doesn't want to be extended with my hips out either. So that's what I'm doing. I'm knocking his chest back and getting getting the weight and threatening him right now. And that's what they don't want. Did you turn around and do it? Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Right here, he goes on the pole. This is the key. Hip-hop. It's a fifth grade or third grade move. All I'm doing is pose. And I hit my And I hide that This way. This is not a hip this is not good. You get not an old dog, and you know what they say about old dog, you can't teach a new trick, so I'm trying to break that hole. Anything else from there? That's all I was doing now. I'm going to go to my turf series on top, from top breakdown. Unless you guys have anything else from down, though, it's real basic. It's more troubleshooting than, than actual. Yeah. Pick up the crab right and then go into a hat. Yeah. Again. He goes to crab right me like, yeah, just go ahead. <coughs> just take, kick me through right there. The best guy is going to try to hit by the door. He's not going to be able to throw me here. But what he's trying to do is he's trying to extend me in there. What I got to do, go ahead and crab right me do that. What happens is we, it's almost like a deer in the headlight. You, your kids start to get head, uh, crab road and they're like, ah. Oh. You got to get them to not get extended and elbows come down. Go back to the basics. Go ahead and crab right Right now, I'm just crap, I'm here. Throw that half. Can't. He can't. Look at where I'm at. I'm pushing back into him on my heels, and my butt is a good three inches off the mat here. If I'm sitting down in here now, even though my elbows are together, wrestle with me. This is tough for me. This is tough for me. I don't, this is hard because my hips are on the mat. Right now, what I would do is I would pick a shoe and start climbing up on it this way. Try to get out of it. And what happens a lot of times, like I said, is Maybe if I do get out of it, and then I end up coming like this, and he's just riding me through. That's better than being in a crab ride, but, you know, from there, then you got to go to your hip fight show, you're moving, 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 moving. As far as if you do get extended in there, you know, it's like, well, what do you do if a guy gets a chicken wing on you? You know, those type of questions. This is a very, you know, this is a very hard thing to do. What i got to do is I obviously got to get my elbow down and then start attacking hands, and I don't grasp. I don't like to grab it. I like to push. See that? I'm not worried about this side. I'm going to take care of business. What's threatening me the most right now? This is. So I'm going to come in here. Go ahead and do, do it. Yeah. He grabs that. I don't worry about that. I'm going to get it off. Elbow in. Now I can come back and attack. But look, I didn't come back and attack like that. I clear this, and then I don't do this. He's coming back inside me. So I clear it. Oh, I made a mistake left. I'm not going to make it again. Now I'm here. Tight. I'm not even posting with my hands. I'm posting on my elbows right here. And I'm extended. I'm extended, but is there a whole lot you can do right now with my elbow state? Yeah. He's, he's feeling a little bit in danger right here. He's probably going to wait out the storm and see which way I'm going to go. <laughs> and I, I just got to pick a side wherever you're comfortable. Guys in Iowa, when I was in Iowa, they used to coach. Go ahead. This is real so clever. They used to coach posting on the mat and the knee, or just posting on the mat. I didn't like that. My arms are short, and when I push up, my butt, and, I, and I'm not clearing his hips. Now I can clear his hips. There. So that's why, and then the, the big argument against coming to the legs, if you want to talk about, if you want to debate a little bit, the big argument about here is, well, he can move his leg. So what? Don't move your leg. I don't, I don't whatever, yeah, I don't, right there, that's fine. I'm out, I'm back in the way. <coughs> so deal with the situation as it comes up. You don't want to be extended. That's the bottom line. You do not want to be extended. Okay, anything else in there? I'm going to hit that stand up one more time for areas that I feel are real important. And then I want, how much time do I left? Okay, then I want to get into the Turk series from the top position. And then I'll hit a little bit on my feet this afternoon. <coughs>
Right now from the map, when you hit a stand up, I talked about going back into the guy. I talked about coming back in here, getting hand control by pushing the hands, not grabbing them, but I'm not really grabbing at all. I just push with the palms. Go ahead, wrestle with me. Right here, I'm getting into here. See, see, did you see what he tried to do with that hand? He tried to dig inside. Automatically, that's what they're going to do. They're going to try to get inside. What I got to do is I got to pinch him off here. And, and, you know, and, and you can, I can tell subconsciously he's frustrated when I do this. Yeah. He's frustrated. Because we're taught, at least I was, I was taught, well, you can come up, I want to come this way, or, you know, I want to get into my feet and then get hand control, or we're coming up, and, and I was actually even taught to freaking do this. Throw the elbow in. You know, that's, that's not that good a technique. Because what's what's hindering me, when I get to my feet, this is what's hindering me right here. This is what's bothering me. I cannot let him get his hands locked. So you deal with it by wrestling with your hands off the mat. And that's kind of what I started the session off with, is when you get jammed forward, you got to post and be able to wrestle from here. Get on top of me. Another good drill with a guy on top. Just go ahead and break me down. I'm not going to let it. See that? Grab my hand. Do something to me. There you go. I don't want to let it get you here. And you learn to balance from your hips from like you're on your feet. So you get as comfortable with the guy behind me and riding me without doing this. Everybody's got to close your hand. Don't relearn it. Relearn it. Don't learn it from... from uh, Plodding, we don't wrestle on our hands. The rule says we have to start here, but it doesn't say that in a split second we can be here. And that's where you got to reprogram tradition. Because I don't want to be on my hands. And he wrestles, and I start right there. Now I'm never on my hands again. Maybe for a quick balance adjustment, go ahead and jam me a little bit. Maybe just balance, balance, whatever. Now I'm okay. Now I'm okay. He pulls me back. He pulls me back. He pulls me back. Coming back up to the feet. Once we get there, right here. Right here. This is where I want to be. Hip height attack. Is that too much to ask you to take on after the skate? Right away? Man. Frustrate, frustrate coach. Frustrate coach, man. Let's go this way. That way the blows. God! It didn't matter. He's going on both sides of me. It didn't matter, did it? Because my hands come to the center of my midsection. And they're the same. He's got this hand in up here. He's got the other hand in up here. Now I start for having a portion of hip heist. Which way do you turn? Try to hit any voids that I left, but which way do you turn? Do you turn this way to this way? Those are details that whatever's comfortable to your athletes, get there. Let them do it. Let them do it. My brother and I debated this for 34 years now. <laughs> <laughs> he turns one way, I like to turn the other way. It doesn't matter. It really does. Okay. Here down. Any other, you got any other questions? Those are good questions. Okay. Yeah. With. I'm grabbing whatever's there. I'm mostly hands, not fingers. Come up. I'm, I want to get right here. Hands. If I grab a wrist, he can still. Yeah. See that? You know. And that's again. That's why I don't do this. See, see what he just did? That's why I do this. I like hands. I like hands. He can't do a whole lot right here. Let's grab. Can't. Here, he still can do this. He can still move your wrist. Move it up and down. Better move it. I can move it. Now, you see that? You see that? As opposed to this, not moving. You see the difference? And that's just, we're talking about that much of a difference. The strength is huge. The strength is huge. And cover the joint. Cover the joint right there. That's me. Are you on the outside leg? Good question. I was going to hit that too, but like I said, I, I can't think of more than a couple things. Once outside or inside leg stand up is key. 
It's a give. It's do I turn this way or do I turn that way? Whichever way you're comfortable. For me, right now, today, he's starting on this side. Now, which leg is going to come up? Start on the left side. I'm going to come here. Start on the right side. Now I'm going to come here. I do an inside leg stand up. But there's days where I'm going to do this. And I'll bet you, if you rewind your video tapes and watch, I'll bet you that I get some outside leg stand up and inside leg stand up. Depending on which way the weight felt to me subconsciously, how he was maybe jamming me or leaning on me before we started, it doesn't matter. I would not spend a lot of detail on coaches that, oh, this way. Some kids don't feel good with their right leg coming up. If you're, if you're left leg dominant, if he's riding me on this side, it's going to be an outside leg stand-up. If he's riding me on this side, it's going to be an in -leg, inside leg stand-up right here. Just so long as you're getting to the, getting to the uh, hand control, I don't think it matters. That's my opinion again. And I, I don't deal with details a lot. I deal with fundamentals and then I got to run with it. Because that's how they're going to be great. If you micromanage those little details, I, I think performance falls off. That's a great question, though. That's a great question. A lot of high schools struggle with that. I know when I was in high school, that was a big thing with my coach, with an outside leg stand-up. Now, as far as down, I got my right. <laughs> okay. yeah. All right, Turk position from the top. <laughs> Basically, this goes back to Gable, too. Gable really was a big proponent of breaking a guy down by using your hips. Whistle blows, I want to get inside his arms, stay behind him, and I want to be able to jam him, not just this way, but coming back according to the pressure. If you notice what I'm doing, I stay behind, I want to jam him. Ideally, I want to go into him, but right now, he's going to come back this way, not there. I might come back into a crab right and pull him over, not this way, right here, now I got him. That type of thing. But, if you take it a little bit further than that, or farther than that, right here, and you get in here, and that whistle blows, attack the hips. That whistle blows, attack the hips. And actually, I learned this from Snyder, so it probably comes right out of you. Right out of you. I will say, he was the dummy for the NCAA uh, coaches clinic at Cleveland. So you know how pleasant he is to be beat up on for two hours. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he was, was phenomenal at riding him when he wanted to ride. He would, he, he would basically get right down here, right here. And it kept. Because look at where you're at. You're at a good double or, or a high crotch. If you switch off your double, that's where we're at. I'm getting right in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this hip to the mat, just like I'm finishing the double. I'm going to run the hip to the mat. I'm going to run my hips into his chest right here. The reason why I do that is a lot of times if I just run his hips to the mat, he can sit up and turn into me. Now I'm starting to get into trouble. With a guy like Haskett, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble here. So if I run my hips into him, I'm going to take the weight off his hips and put it more toward his shoulders. Top hand. That's your Turk hand. Top hand. And I hope I wrote, wrote underrated pinning hole in America. What did I write on there? Did I? Because this, guys, this is something that we need to hammer as a country. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret right now. You want to talk about secrets? Learn the Turk. Learn the Turk. It's an eternal pinning hole. Once you get that Turk... All the Turk is is a lever between the legs that says his hips can't get back to the mat. I can't get my hips to the mat because there's a lever there. And that's all I'm doing. That whistle blows. I come right here. One of those hips, top hand Turk. Right there. Now from here, what I want to do is, this is where it gets sticky with new kids learning this. This bottom hand is a little bit of a concern. We've been taught our whole lives to be here when we ride. And that's why I come up. Am I running out of time? I'm okay. Coach, time? Uh, of course, eight, five. Okay, okay. When I get in here, what are we taught? Run, 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 run. Two points. Great covering. <coughs> There's a Turk there, guys. <laughs> Same thing on bottom. You get it, come on. You get a guy right here. We get to here, we just want to cover. See that? The, the only reason why you're going to have trouble with this with your kids is because it's new and they're not used to being down in this position. This hand's blown all the way. Once I turn, just continue to run into him at that angle. That angle, I want to go across the shoulders. The turn hand lifts the bottom leg. It always lifts the bottom leg. Just remember that. If his if it's, uh, right hip's on the mat, Right leg. Once his left hip goes to the mat, turn all the way through. Once his left hip goes to the mat, and I reverse my turf, and I reverse half, I throw my elbow to the mat, 
and I reversed my jerk like a reverse half. If you notice what I did, I threw my hips into him, come to the shoulder, and we go to the weight room right here. Pulling back into me, he's going to turn hard, and then I sit. And then I said, all this hand does is when he turns back into me, it rotates. He gets covered into a pin on him. Coming back again, <coughs> go down. Let's see. Right here, top hand turks. Put a run over that shoulder as soon as he turns. Go ahead, switch my turk, hit some underneath. For him to beat this, his top leg has to get to his chest. With their face, now we can do that. I'm not going to allow there to be space. Come here. Lift. Good turn. Ideally, what I want to do is come back to this. Ideally, what I want to do is get to this point. I want to catch him right here. Roll through. Can't right here. He's coming in. He's making the heck out of that way. Come back in here. Get in that turk with me. Right there. That time, if you notice, I kind of walked my hand up and didn't let him roll through. But to learn it, to learn the series either way. To learn the series in here, get him here, have him run all the way through. He rolls. Come here, pick him up. If he rolls back into me, roll again. Pick him up, roll back into me hard. Bottom leg, I just keep switching my hand. Lift, lift. Yeah. So on and so forth. Then settle down. Down again. Real quick. Leg turks. Same thing. Come down here, Ryan. Lift this thing up right here. This is where we miss it. When we're taught to turn, we step through the cross section on the body. What I want to do is I want to step high and drive over the top of it this way. See that? If you notice what I, what I do there, Right here, you lift this. This is all I need. I just need to stay above his knee and I got him. The difficult is we're trying to lift like this a lot of times. He just keeps putting his knee to his chest. Right there. Come in here. Get above that knee. And it takes some horsepower. It takes some time away from him. That's alright though. Come here, I'm going to step through with my leg and take it that way over this shoulder again. Remember, we're pinning here. Step over, straight over the shoulder. Right there. He can roll with me and do whatever he wants. <laughs> Hips stay low. Wait a long time. You can get right there. Yep, I am running right over this. Right there. Finish that off. You get the leg turk in there. Come in here. Cross face. What I like to do is I like to keep the shoulder between the head right here. Go ahead and wrestle with me a little. Elevate the leg that's turking. Pinch your knees together. Push off your toe. Pull the head out of the chest right there. And that's where you're gonna, he can flop and do whatever he wants to do in there. It's just a matter of just settling down. One thing about pinning, everybody talks about pushing off your toes, pushing with your hips, chest to chest. As much as you do that, pull up with your arms. <laughs> wrestle. I'm going to pull up with my arm right there. See that? Now, now he's not flopping so much. See that? Same thing. We get into our pin arm. Twitch, though. Get into our pin arm here. Up down, chest to chest. Wrestle. Go ahead and wrestle with him. Right there. Now watch. Come back again. As soon as I do this, now wrestle with me. As soon as I do that, I'm just going to sit down. Pull up. Pull the body to you as much as you push down with your feet. That'll help. <laughs> From the hands, coming in here, high hand, I'm running that through. He maybe, yep, right there. Come in here, settle in. Same thing. I wouldn't recommend trailing from here, but you can do what you need to do. Go ahead and wrestle with him. He's going to come in here. And I pull the body to me again. All right? Any questions there? Highly recommend you to learn that. If you don't already, I would work it every single day. What I'm going to do today, this afternoon, is I'm going to talk about some penetration things. And then off of those doubles, we'll start there this afternoon where I'm coming. Look at where we're at. Same thing on a high cross. Coming up. Get on a high cross here. Drive it across. There's your turn. 
There's your turkey. Guys, he's there every doggone leg of that. Every time. Right. Key is when you're learning, hands are down, and you got to learn that there's there's five basic skills in wrestling that I can do: stance, motion, level change, penetration, lift, and drive.